Good morning and bonjour here to the second day of Printing United in Atlanta. I am here with two, I think I can tell, I mean, you are friends, honestly, right? So I have uh, Ron Gilboa and I have Steve, I can't even remember your surname. Billo. That's right. So we're so much friends, we're on first name, right? <laughs> but from uh, Fujifilm Diam uh, Dimetics and uh, great to see you guys. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Real good. Thanks for having us, Morton. I, uh, I'm excited about this uh, opportunity because, I mean, uh, and you must be excited too, because if you look at a show like this, I mean, I guess you see uh, your products with kind of few of the vendors on the street, on the, on the show floor, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, from your perspective, you're still relatively new as a... As I'm a, a year in, I think. Is a, a year and a week. Okay. Yeah. And how um, is it about half a year ago we spoke uh, online together or... I, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. it was relatively new. I remember you told me that uh, that Steve started yep. and uh, that's super great. I mean, uh, everybody talks Inkjet and you do Inkjet, right? Yep. What is, the, what is the biggest challenge with Inkjet in your opinion? Oh, well... In the in this conversation from, from or this uh, this uh, let's say conversion from yeah, from uh, yeah. let's say analog world to digital world, right? Yeah, there's two types of answers, right? There's the technical side. Mm -hmm. I'm an engineer. I know. So, so I you, think about, I will probably get both, all right? You know, it's this you know, poly science type challenge that Inkjet is. But I think the bigger challenge is uh, you know competing against older technology, right? Mm -hmm. So people have been working on on these analog processes for decades, mm -hmm. and they've got them really good. And so trying to displace those, that's the biggest challenge for our industry in general. Mm. And Ron, I mean, you've both been on the analyst side, but also know customers, of course, right? So yep. um, is it easy to convince people to change? I mean, I think that human nature is conservative, right? So yep. when we talk about change, how do you see that? I think that, you know, print service providers for all the different segments that we look at are always looking for things that will better their customers and better their bottom line. Mm -hmm. And it seems like in certain segments, there is a mixture of analog and digital and certain segment digital have been taking over. Mm. And if you look at the history of this event, uh, it started with wide format, which is predominantly digital today. Yeah. And slowly it's been evolving into including commercial and packaging, uh, where digital has been slowly gaining more and more momentum, whether it's roll fed and sheet fed. And we've seen a bunch of you know, new technologies in the space just emerging in this show. Mm. Uh, so I think that print service providers that are looking for automation, ease of use, and things of that nature are starting to gravitate into those because their business dynamics requires that. Mm. But I, it's funny you mentioned that because I mean, you said some of the technical things just like briefly and, and we sp speak about these kind of things, but I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit about the chicken and the egg because I mean, if you look at the da demand mm. and, the, and, the, and how consumers and businesses are changing demand for print, personalization, uh, mass customization, uh, shorter print runs. I mean, it seems that this is going this way, whatever we like it or not, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there, it'll, it'll happen, it's just, you know, when. I joined, my first industrial print job was with Jetran. Mm -hmm. And so Jetran started 20 years ago, give or take. And they were really ahead of their time. It's really right now, if you went to Label Expo, the, the amount of digital at that show mm -hmm. was incredible. Mm -hmm. And we talked to some of the bigger players that, are, that have both analog and digital, mm -hmm. and pretty much everybody agrees 2024 could be the year that digital outsells analog. That is unbelievable. That's amazing. In the scheme in, of things, it's is, only is 20 that, years. Is that in like uh, revenue or in-, in number, number of units. Machines, number of units, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 very and, exciting. Yeah, and what suppliers like Dymatics and our partners Fuji and Film their Dimatics. partners, Fujifilm Dimatics. Yes, you're right. <laughs> you, Fujifilm Dimatics. Yeah. Thank you, Morton. Um, so, Fujifilm Dimatics and our partners. That's a good one, wasn't it? And, yeah, I, you, I yeah, like, enjoy yeah, that. Can, yeah, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> friends like this. Who needs? And we have it on uh, camera, right? Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, absolutely. Yeah, I, I want that outtake. Hmm. Yeah. In any case, uh, Fujifilm Dimatics and our partners. If you looked at the last few decades of in innovations in inkjet, you know, you bring in the quality with the right side of print heads, you know, 1200 DPI native, multi gray scales and things of that nature. And then you see how our partners are taking those and innovating around ink technology. Mm. So yeah, it needs to be a that, right? right. Because, otherwise one because it's gotta, no it's gotta right. stick to the surface. Yeah. It's gotta be food safe. There's all of these things that have been continuously evolving where maybe 10, 15 years ago, you can print on bond paper with ink that spread a lot and the quality wasn't so good. Today, you can get 
high level of qualities on multiple substrates in inks that could be de-inkable, which is very important, I know, course, in Europe yeah. and also in the US, it's becoming more important given all of the issues around recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes food safe and all of those. So those are slowly coming together mm -hmm. and they're bringing in that level of quality that you see on the floor mm -hmm. uh, from our partners and from the Fujifilm graphics business mm. that is just phenomenal quality. Mm. Uh, so quality is not an issue. No. It's just now to get the volume and the run rates and the TCOs where they need to be. Precisely. Can't help think about, I mean, most uh, in the industry now, in part of the industry know, of course, the sample print has uh, a, a good trade name, but you, of course, do many different types of, uh, of uh, uh, other kind of inkjet has. Well, I'm, I'm not asking so much about into that, but do you think that, that uh, with sample uh, that you have like kind of in the people's imagination or it may be even factual uh, is the biggest supplier of printheads in, in, in this industry or? Uh, we don't share our volumes. No, no, but, but I'm just like, I was just like, because I mean, if I look at, I mean, we know some of the competitors out there, but I still think that when I see some of, of your customers, like the OEMs using printheads, it seems that uh, the sample printhead is very dominant, in, it, at least in the marketing space. It right? is going through an incredible surge right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, well, it's been going on for a couple of years. Yeah. Again, it's, you know, Samba came on the scene in the jet press before 2000. I saw it 2012. It was before that. So it takes time for technology to, to mature. And not only that, for people to be comfortable with it. But that is why I spoke about before with the, you know, the adaptation of, yeah. because I mean, one thing is that sometimes you can do something technology technology wise and sometimes it's more like, okay, we have to wait for people to be ready for it, right? So. Ron, you have been here yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and you just uh, came uh, yesterday evening. So what are you showing uh, Steve today? Um, what, what is like the takeaways where you think, oh, you, you should know, see this the one? The first thing <laughs> Steve is going to see today is the Fujifilm booth. Oh, yeah, of course. Which right. is, so you know where to put uh, his bag, right? Yes, where to put his bag, <laughs> where to get his espresso, and it's the biggest booth at the show. Yeah. Uh, Fujifilm has been a supporter of the show for many, many years. Uh, and this year is unique because Fujifilm also has a full complement of digital products mm -hmm. from work group all the way to high-end production from jet press and our own fujifilm integrated inkjet solutions they're all your on the floor B2 toner. I know that uh, that's not your there's business, a new there's I mean, a new b2 toner there, right? absolutely mm -hmm. which is a really nice machine mm -hmm. the samples are over there they look pretty good so first <laughs> thing good. i mean you're, you're difficult to impress right they, they look they look good they look good they look really good uh, and there is some future technologies on display there so first thing is we're going to definitely go see that but then we have a lot of partners around the show that we're going to go and look at and see what they're doing uh, and see some of the samples they brought with them. A lot of companies didn't bring equipment because yeah. it's just big, yeah. but there's a lot of samples that are really, really impressive. Mm. Uh, Steve, I was thinking, I mean, as you said, one year in as a president for, for, for Fujifilm Dimetics, I mean, would you also have time to go and see what, what the competitors are bringing or? Oh, sure, we pay a lot of attention to that. Look, we, what's, when, new technology comes out, whether it be from us or a competitor, it pushes the market forward, right? And it makes inkjet more stream, more mainstream. So, uh, of course, we're competitors, but I really think that we push each other and we push the, the market adoption. Mm. So, uh, of course, we compete, but we're, we're also in this together. Mm. I remember uh, many years ago, uh, I mean, I even think that we spoke about, I think it was one of the last Graph Expos, uh, I spoke, spoke to uh, uh, Memjet and, and they were like, in the beginning, it was like, okay, we're not really competing with each other because we're actually transforming a market from analog yeah. to digital. And that makes, basically means that the size is so huge that it's, yeah. uh, it's very application depending on what kind of technology. If you, if you look at you know, how we project our growth, mm -hmm. for sure, we'll trade share. You know, we, our, our, our goal is to take market share, of course, but by far and away, the greatest growth potential for Fujifilm Dynamics is by growing the whole industry. Mm. That, that outweighs taking share by probably a factor of 10. Oh, really? So that's where we're focused. Yeah, there's so many things you can do with inkjet. Obviously, we're here about printing, and printing is the massive But market. I mean, there's all the industrial print that is exactly. not here, for example. People I mean, are using inkjet to print batteries, to mm. print PCBs, to print solar panels. It's, it's we, amazing we what you have, can do. We have been so fortunate uh, to, to work with quite a few in, in, the, in the tile industry. And I was surprised that it's, they have also been very, very good at adapting digital technology yep. for, 
I mean, something that when I told my wife that, she said, no way. Yeah. Cannot be true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't tell you how many people I talk to about tiles. And they're like, no, that's the, you, get, you dig that out of the ground. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no, those are printed. In fact, yeah. those are inkjet printed. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. And that is just amazing how these things are, are changing all the time, right? I mean, uh, but I think that coming back to what I spoke to Memjet about at that time, that adaption and, and that is changing now because of the, let's say, the mega trends we spoke about before, how the market is changing. So it must be a fantastic time. And besides that, um, I mean, obviously, you focus on on Dimatics and and uh, Fujifilm Dimatics and <laughs> and <laughs> okay, it will become a standing joke. I'm the only one that hasn't screwed that up yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you will <laughs> sooner or later. Just given the opportunity. Yeah, just given the opportunity. No, I was just thinking uh, the the uh, the fact that with a growing market uh, in 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 this the transformation from 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 analog to digital will also require some let's say adjustment of pricing because i think that is also one of the concerns that people are a little bit afraid that okay is this more expensive than than printing in analog and uh, how can we predict our pricing models and i think that must also play a role in in, yeah. in the adaption right i mean in in many many segments and graphic arts is no different than any other industrial segment uh, Bottom line is important, supply chain is important, efficiency of operations are important. Mm. We used to think at the beginning that, oh, if we only get the quality, everything is gonna settle in. Mm. Well, quality is the stepping stone to any market and the quality varies from segment to segment. Mm. What you need for tiles is not what you need for packaging, yeah. what you need for documents. Yeah. Um, so we had to establish that baseline and then once you establish this baseline, you see that most operations, manufacturing operations, they're very conscious about their supply chain and the cost of operating. Mm. Question, and that's, uh, that's, what's, that's what's driving a lot of them. Mm. And that's what our industry is coming to grips with because mm. if it's good and it's cool and it's high quality, but it's five times the price, it's not gonna transfer. So it needs to be competitive and it needs to enable them to do something different with the supply chain, whether it's reducing waste, whether it's time to market and things of that nature. Mm. I'm just wondering, I mean, uh, we talk about the digital side right now, but uh, Fujifilm is also a huge supplier of CTP and, and uh, uh, plates. Do you, do you, can you use that data from mm. that divisions to basically forecast uh, potential customers? I know, I mean, you sell the printhead, so I know that you don't directly have that, but do you know whether that is an option within Fujifilm? Yeah, and so it definitely in some markets, mm -hmm. uh, we, we leverage our channel, mm -hmm. and of course they leverage us too, right? Yeah. So it, there are a lot of different ways where it's great to be part of a big company like Fujifilm, yeah. and that, that's yeah. one of them. So when you say being part of a larger company like Fujifilm, I mean, are you, do you really consider much yourself as a, let's say, an entity on your own where you have your own everything, or? Well, we're part of Fujifilm, yeah. right? So, but we are, are a separately owned company with okay. one shareholder, Fujifilm. Okay. And so we are accountable yeah. to Fujifilm, yeah. right? And so if we want to upgrade our fab, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars. You have right? to ask somebody. <laughs> right. So Fujifilm is... And it's, and is, it's not the bank it, you ask first, it's Fujifilm you ask right. first. Fujifilm's right. like our bank, yeah. right? And so that's, that's another advantage of being part of this big company is, mm. you know, if, if you try to get payback mm. on, a, on a fab in two years, it's not going to happen. Probably you need probably. that long-term vision, yeah. that patience, mm. and Fujifilm has demonstrated that. But I mean, also when you look at Fujifilm over the past years, uh, uh, a lot of new employees, a lot of acquisitions, mm -hmm. in the, in particular in the inkjet industry. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems that Fujifilm has kind of, I'm not saying that they had a, a, a slower life, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying that it seems that they, somebody kicked their butt and said that now we're going to be the market leader in, in almost every segment they're working in. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you gotta think of it from the perspective of the historical disposition of Fujifilm. That's so of for example, the biggest change you see in our booth this year is that we have all of our products on the booth yeah. for small document also production into, speed and into and production. Okay. Uh, continuous feed is slowly moving in, mm -hmm. uh, but up till now there were some legal issues given the separation from Xerox that yeah. we had to account for, so that was and like those are moving away. So that was like the timing between the separations right. for, for the legal things right. and the periods of time. So now yeah. when you walk into our booth, you'll see that Fujifilm footprint mm. in all of its uh, uh, scale, yeah. you see packaging that is analog, you mm. see packaging that is digital. Mm. You see document printing on small sheet fed, medium sheet fed, large sheet fed, roll fed demos. You see the new Barbaran relationship and others kind of popping up. You see our imprinting products. Um, that is a footprint that beforehand 
uh, the team didn't have, oh, and obviously you have the white format stuff. Yeah, course, so yeah. beforehand, we didn't have the access to it because of all of the legal issues, and those are now out of the way, and the company's coming into itself with all of the product lines you just mentioned. Mm. Uh, Ron, uh, I said that uh, Steve worked as a president. I mean, uh, what, what are you doing in your, in your let's say, work life? What is, uh, what is your role? Uh, my work life Fuji is... Fujifilm Dimetics. Yep, so my work life is business development. Mm -hmm. So together with my, uh, with the product managers and our senior VP for uh, uh, marketing and I think still not, not marketing, mm -hmm. we're doing all of the analysis on the markets we serve. Mm. Okay, uh, so that is like asking customers, checking what's in the market, it's understanding from, the From the voice demands. of car to customers yeah. Yeah. to forecast to primary research to understand which segment we should go after, mm. uh, which segments are emerging. Mm where does our existing technology fits into and what new technology we need to invest in because those investments are, as Steve said, they're long-term. Yeah. It's so uh, you, ink, inkjet's a target-rich environment, yeah. Yeah. right? There's so many things we can do. The, the hardest part is not finding opportunities. The hardest part is picking the right one. Yeah. That is part of Ron's job. Yeah. Okay. Make sure we aim the ship in the right direction. That must be fun. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah, yeah. It's not a dull moment. But I'm wondering if it's fun for you to manage him. Uh, well, <laughs> let's take that off camera. No, no. <laughs> no, Ron's great. You know, yeah, I know. It's, I, having I'm just someone... joking because I know that he can also have some, you know, you know, you also have a good dark humor. I, That's fine. I think that, you know, one of the reasons I joined Dymatics to begin with. Fujifilm Dymatics. Uh, Fujifilm Dymatics. <laughs> <laughs> You got to stop this. Uh, one of you the reasons, I, it, Ron, yeah, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> so one of the reasons I joined Fujifilm Dramatics to begin with was because I'm really excited about Inkjet. I have been for many, many years. You've known that. I know that, yeah. Uh, and I think that there is a team spirit where you can bring in ideas to the table, and every idea could be put up, discussed, and then we decide if it's worthwhile or not worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, I mean, which that is must great. be awesome working. I mean, because uh, that makes a lot of room for creativity yep. and maybe also some, you know, strange path. And then maybe that strange path yep. can be altered into yep. something that is more viable, right? Yep. I mean, it must be funny work. And I've been around Inkjet long enough to know that it takes time yeah. and you have to be really, really patient yeah. uh, for the technology to come into its own. And it's really gratifying to see it coming to its own. Mm. And, so. and, and from that perspective, having an owner like Fujifilm, I think that a lot of Japanese companies have way longer patience and way longer investment horizons than if you are like a, uh, let's say, an American company that needs to have results too fast, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that gets back to the investments that we can make, mm. right? Some of the investments we make are massive investments, and it takes, it can take seven, eight years to yeah. pay back. Yeah. That's not an unreasonable payback period no. at Fujifilm. That even sounds like a relatively fast. Well, I, I can tell you this, other companies I've worked at, that would be a tough, tough okay. justification. Okay. Fantastic. So, um, gentlemen, uh, I hope you enjoyed your coffee. I really Thank enjoyed you. your, uh, I hope it was okay to joke a little bit with you. It's okay, always. <laughs> and it was uh, great seeing you here on Inkish and our little bonjour. So, um, have Thank a you, Mark. Day. Have great a great show. You. Good to see you, Mark. Good to see you, Ron. All the best. Yep. <laughs>